And our topic this week is foliar feeding soybeans. So Phil, we're making our way through a rather tough season. And so one of the most common questions then is, is why and when should we foliar feed soybeans? Yeah, that's a great question. We are in a, in a tough year and that's probably the one thing that's gonna decide whether we see a yield benefit. We get this question a lot about foliar feeding soybeans, especially for those that are top end managers, which is great. Um, we'll go through some of the, the, the key management practices to make it successful, but uh, just like anything, we're, we're kind of at that, that uh, yield expectation uh, phase right now where we're doing yield estimates, we're kind of looking through things and even looking at soybeans. So it's probably best to temper the expectation a little bit because a year like this is going to make it much more challenging uh, to see some of the benefits when it comes to a foliar feed. But uh, still a good idea, you know, as we think about all these things and, and with the commodity prices the way they are, obviously, it's top on everybody's mind if they can add something and get, you know, maybe, uh, uh, you know, $10, $15 an acre and get an additional couple bushel, then it's, and it's worth it. So it's just one of those things that's kind of hit or miss depending on the year, uh, but we'll kind of talk about a few of those things. Okay. So I guess when and why then? What, what sure. would you say? Yeah, so the, the, the first thing I always say with foliar feeds is you gotta have your base down. You gotta have that baseline fertility. So I'm talking about everything, not just the big, you know, NPKS. You know, I mean, we gotta have everything in line. And, and I'll add, uh, I've learned over the years that it's not good enough just to say have high levels. You don't want just high levels of fertility. You want balanced fertility, obviously. You don't wanna just throw a bunch of P and K out there and never test your soil. It's important to have a balance uh, because you know one of the references I make a lot is, is uh, corn and, and zinc. Uh, if you have really high phosphorus, so if you're putting lots of manure out there, that can tie up that zinc and make it not as available to the plant. So that balance of fertility is really important. So when it comes to foliar feeding, you got to have all that baseline stuff done and out of the way before you think about foliar feeding. Uh, usually, when you're when you're putting on a foliar, you're only looking at a couple bushel, which is which is fine, uh, especially in the commodity prices the way they are right now. Uh, you may spend a bushel or so and hopefully gain two. You know, when it comes to putting on a foliar product, it's going to be 10, 10 to twenty dollars an acre typically, depending on what you're doing. Uh, but you're aiming to get those top few bushels or hold on those top few bushels, I should say. Um, the other, the other thing I, I always say when it comes to foliar feeds, when you can't supply a certain nutrient, uh, and, and this refers, say, when I used to work back in Indiana, a lot of times on high organic matter soils, you'd see manganese deficiency a lot. Uh, that's one that's really common with foliar feeding because you can't really apply it to the soil. You know, I just mentioned zinc and the phosphorus interaction in the soil. So there's some of those micros that uh, it's a little tougher to get into the plant that, that you can foliar feed. Um, but you got to remember, uh, a lot of these foliar products do have all the big ones in them. NPK, uh, it's all for a lot of a lot of I'll call it complete, uh, you know, nutrition in them. Um, but it requires the soybean plant alone requires a lot of those. So you're never going to supply enough of the big macros. Um, it's more of a, a micro thing, you know, get a few of those micros uh, on in the mix uh, to to maybe make up for a deficiency or something. The other thing I'd say is is it's uh, early season in a tougher situation just like kind of like with corn we want to protect the yield so if you're in a no-till or strip till or a certain scenario or situation where maybe root growth and stuff is challenged um, that's another opportunity for a, a foliar product or to try out a foliar product so um, and, and last thing at timing wise i don't know that there's any great perfect answer to this uh, but typically uh, the best timings are, are early Production, so R1, R2, or fungicide timing. Uh, you know, right before it starts to fill the seed, we're kind of right at that time. Maybe a little past, I should say, but uh, R3, R4. So about the time you'd want to apply a fungicide to soybeans, that's about the time you want to think about a foliar feed product. Because what happens to the soybean plant right at this time is it's moving all of its uh, nutrients from the leaves to the seed. So the the, the uptake of nutrients from the root is not, I would say, not of utmost importance. So it's moving all the nutrients to the to the pods from the leaves, not necessarily taking up as much from the root. So and root growth stops uh, a little after R6, the green bean stage. Um, so we're still taking up nutrients, but the process has kind of changed. The plant has kind of changed its mindset. It's trying to fill those pods and use the resources it has on hand 
can use the water just to move those into the pot. So it's not necessarily focusing on uptake. So that's why the, the idea behind putting a foliar down, uh, it's right there, it's in the leaf, it just moves it right onto the pod, or into the pod, excuse me, is, is, is kind of the thought process behind some of that. Okay. So second question that we get related to this topic then, where where does the yield benefit really come from on a full year bean soybeans? Yeah, and these are all tough questions, I'll say, because, uh, you know, research shows that the full year feed is, is, in my opinion, very environmentally related. So you might see a, a few bushel yield bump on a certain yield. You might see, you know, five plus yield uh, increase on soybeans, but uh, it's going to be really dependent on the year we have. Um, so if you look at the, at the soybean plant, Typically, you'll see about 60% 60 60 of the yield coming from the center part of the plant. So roughly nodes 7 to 12, 7 to 13, somewhere in there, you're going to see most of the pods in that area. That's why we always we always talk about when you have pod clusters at the top, you know, that's that's exciting to see if you have a bunch of clustering at the top. Uh, it's kind of an indication that things are going well. The plant has extra to spare. In this case, uh, it's a, a little more lackluster, I'd say terms of pod development but you want that majority in the center part of the plant because it's harder to get these down here in case your header height has to increase while you're harvesting so uh, most of the yield is going to come from those so that's where I focus on looking at uh, but the, the first timing I want to talk about uh, is, is early season so early season uh, it, I would, I'm going to relate these kind of back to like a, a herbicide pass and, and, and the reason is for that is because it's ideal to be able to combine those but also that's key timing for the soybean plant. So I've talked in the past about V5. It's kind of like corn in terms of figuring out the number of rows around a corn ear. Uh, soybeans are figuring out the node number. So uh, in this case, it's it's got about 16, 17 nodes. In my opinion, that is a little uh, on the low side for a bean that's a 2-6 maturity in this area. But um, that early time frame around V5, it's important to have more of a complete nutrition. This is where if you're using a foliar product and it's got everything in it, that would be the timing that I would try it um, because the plant wants everything. It's, it's taken up everything in high quantities. If you're a little earlier in the season, you got a tougher field situation, no-till like I mentioned before, it, it's great to have it earlier uh, because the plant is number one trying to put on nodules in the roots. It's trying to establish all those things and, and still get nitrogen. You know, a, a soybean plant takes nitrogen up the fastest, the easiest way it possibly can. So if there's nitrogen in the soil, it's not going to nodulate. Um, however, typically that's a waste of your money if you're putting it down, but if there's residual nitrate in the soil, the soybean plant does better. It's, it's faster, it takes it up right then and there. It doesn't have to work as hard to get those nodules established. So early season, having more of a complete uh, system is probably best in terms of a foliar product. But then as you move down the season, uh, I'd say early reproduction is probably a primary focus for many, many uh, farmers doing a foliar product, and that's that's because of holding on to flowers. Uh, you know, you hear that a lot. Uh, you know, we want to retain as many pods, as many flowers as we can, and that's true. If, if you look at it, the, the research has shown uh, for many, many decades that they've known this, that soybeans abort typically uh, two-thirds or 66% of the flowers that they have on there, so flowers and pods. So if you think about that, the potential for this plant, uh, this is only a third of what it potentially could have produced. So putting it on early right when the plant's going into reproduction and flowering kind of helps uh, maintain some of those flowers uh, helps to keep them on the plant uh, and utilize that that's why one of the one of the ones that typically is in those mixes is boron uh, boron really helps with keeping those flowers it helps with uh, reproduction in general but uh, keep maintaining those flowers on the plant the last one I, I usually mention is the one that I typically shoot for and that's around that R3, R4 time period. So, uh, you know, fungicide roughly time period, but more importantly, uh, early seed fill. So R3 um, is, is, is a beginning pod. That's when you have a small pod on the plant. Uh, R4 is when you have a three quarter inch to one inch pod on the plant. Uh, so that's really when the plant is changing its, its uh, thought process from, uh, okay, we're putting on some flowers, but still growing tall, vegetatively, putting on nodes, it still does that until pretty much this time right now. Um, it's changing that thought process slowly into focusing on seeds and putting pods on and seeds on. So, you know, anytime you can reduce the stress, just like in corn, reduce the stress on the soybean plant, uh, it can focus on what it should be, and that's, you know, reproducing and putting more 
pods on the plant, more more seeds in each pod. So um, I would say focus on, uh, you know, uh, once again, a balanced nutrition when it comes to uh, that point. But if you want to do just a micro mix, this would be a good time to do a micro mix too, because uh, that's, that's when some of these things, you know, it, it should have an established root system, uh, but um, it, it could be fighting for some of that. And as the roots slow down, pulling up some of those nutrients, uh, it's helpful to have some of that on board. So, and I forgot to mention, but early season, typically, you know, when you have cool conditions, we focus, you know, like we have a lot of IDC issues and stuff, but uh, some of those blends with manganese and iron and things like that really help early season. Uh, well, number one, soybeans is, is nodule production. And, and uh, you, it requires a lot when it comes to uh, manganese and, and molybdenum and things like that, that that help establish the nodules of the root. So there's a lot of little factors that go into foliar feed, um, but those are just some ideas on timing um, and what the plant's doing and, and so forth. So it just gives you a, a kind of a little idea as to what's happening in the plant. Okay. So last part of it then comes into play when, it, when you think about economics. So what are some tips that you have or or practices, recommendations that way that you can give us to help us make this this effort pay. Yeah, I, I think that's the key here is, is you may not see return. So uh, the best thing you can do is likely, and most of these are uh, in many cases even, even recommended or, or the, the tank mix is on the label. Um, you can tank mix it with uh, many of the products, many of the herbicide products, fungicide products, things like that. So uh, depending when you're trying it, uh, make sure that you look at that time frame if it's a post on herbicide, you know, can you get in a little bit early maybe when the plant's struggling a little more, V3, V4, you know, I know that's before the plant canopies, but we need to take care of our weeds sooner uh, than we have this year especially. Uh, but uh, earlier than, than typical maybe would really help the soybean plant. Uh, the other thing is, you know, fungicide timing really relays well to early seed fill. That's when we want to protect the leaves. That's also when the plant needs some of these extra nutrients. So, you know, it's, it's just a... You should combine that as much as you can because you're going to reduce that pass across the field, uh, and it kind of helps, uh, kind of helps you give you that benefit, especially with things like glyphosate that can tie up uh, manganese in the plant. Uh, th those foliar feeds can really help kind of offset that a little bit and help the plant get going again after metabolizing that herbicide. So, you know, just a lot of things to think about. Like I mentioned, though, the utmost importance one is a balanced fertility program. You know, we didn't talk about some of the, the little nuances, but typically those micros are, are less available at a high pH. You know, we struggle with IDC, manganese, all those metals are less available at high pHs. And the only one you don't have to worry about is molybdenum. That'll get more available as the pH goes up. But typically, if you know that you have conditions like high pH, uh, high organic matter, which can tie up certain ones, uh, those kind of things, keep that in mind when you're selecting a field uh, to fully your fertilizer. All right, great tips, Phil. Thanks for the questions, listeners, on high-yield soybeans and foliar feeding. We'll be back next week with another topic.